So here in Final Cut Pro, we're gonna have a look at how we make a square video format for Instagram or Facebook. We're gonna have a look at a couple of things, including how we can turn off some of the automatic scaling for videos in Final Cut Pro 10, then also how we can add text above and below the video on either a black or a white background. So let's jump in here and we'll have a look at how we begin to do this. So the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is go to File and New Project. Now, once you get in here, um, it's worth taking a look at the Facebook website, which runs Instagram just to see what the latest settings are. So at the moment, the settings for video can be up to 1080 by 1080 pixels for a square video. Um, it used to be a little bit smaller for Instagram. Now it used to be 600 by 600 pixels, but now they've increased that size um, for some of the larger tablets and smartphones that are out there. So you can have a larger size video. So on Facebook's website, they have a business guide for different sizes of video for adverts and for uploading. So if we scroll down here, you can see some of the settings for the video. So the maximum length is 60 seconds. The minimum resolution is 600 by 600 for square video or 600 by 750 if you want to have a vertical video, but we're going to be dealing with a 1080 by 1080 video. And then we've also got a frame rate, a maximum of 30 frames per second. Um, so we're going to be working at 29.97 simply because that's the frame rate of the camera that I'm working with. So we're going to jump back into Final Cut Pro. So in the window here that we're working with, um, we're going to go to the video format and change this to custom. So once that's set to custom, we can type in a resolution here. So we can type in 1080 and we can leave the height at 1080. So essentially we set the width to 1080 and the height to 1080. Now the format here for the rendering on the timeline, we can leave as is, as Apple ProRes 422. And then we can change the frame rate either to 29.97 or 30p. It doesn't make too much difference. I'm gonna leave it at 29.97 just because that's what I'm getting from my camera at the moment um, with the drop frame. So now I'm gonna call this Instagram square video. And we're creating it in the event 120707 copy or we can put it in a different event if we want to. It doesn't matter too much um, what we're doing here. So we'll click OK, and now we'll begin to have a look at what happens when we drop down some video to the timeline. So essentially I've got some HD video that we're gonna be dropping down to the timeline. We're gonna use this uh, image of a, a breaking wave. In fact, I think this one's a, a little bit nicer. So we'll drop this down to the timeline. And remember that the duration is 60 seconds. So basically we're running to about 49 seconds here. So we're close to the the full time. I'm going to take the sound off this video. So on the timeline, I can see the waveform here and I can hover over this line above the waveform and just drop it down to minus infinity, which will take all the sound away. And so we're left with this video of the wave breaking and we could add some stabilization to that if we wanted to. What I really want to look at is the technicalities of how we actually can then increase this so it fills the whole square or keep it at this size so that we can have text above and below. So by default, we have some settings that automatically fit things to our video's canvas size. So with the video highlighted in the timeline, we're going to come up to the inspector on the top right. If you don't see the inspector, just go to window, show in workspace and make sure you've got inspector checked or command and four and that will show the inspector and then we're going to scroll down and we're going to change the spatial conform from fit to none which is essentially going to increase the size of the video so it fills that frame so the height of this video uh, timeline is 1080 and the highlight of and the height of the original video is 1080 as well so now you can see we've got the video fitting that now we can move this as well to the left and right if we want to so we've got options the position um, here up in the inspector and we can just hover over the number here and drag up or down or left or right so i'm going to reset that because i really only want to drag left or right just to reframe that shot and you can see the edge of the shot coming into play there so now we have the video framed in that square and we've got the full video in there so that's how to add a full video um, to the square video format. And what we want to look at now is how to add text above and below. So we're now going to just scroll down here and turn the, the fit back on. And I'm going to reset my transform properties. So the position here. So we'll come to the position and just use this little hooked arrow to reset that. And so now we have this black bar at the top and at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is now just add in um, a placeholder for this. So I'm going to come to my generators up at the top left because I want to look at how we can have a different color in the background. So we've got black here and we can add text above this 
but if we want to add a different color, a white background or a colored background um, for the text at the top and bottom, then we need to use our generators. So we're going to come to the generators here and we're looking for the solids. Um, and essentially we can pick the custom solid and just drop this down to the timeline. Once we've got that on the timeline, we can come up to the inspector again and we've got options with this little number two for the, the color of that solid. And we can pick the color from this box. Um, so we can pick a color that we've already uh, selected here, um, or we can use one of the RGB sliders to kind of change the color of what we're getting. Okay, so I'm gonna go for a, a little bit of a, an orange here. And then I'm gonna grab my video and just lift it up above there. So now you can see we've got my video over the top of that custom color. So I can stretch that out. So it snaps to the end of the video. And if you don't have snapping turned on, just come to the right hand side here. And it's this fourth button in um, which turns snapping on and off. The shortcut for it is N. So now we're gonna add some type above this. So we'll come to the uh, titles options here and click in titles and we're looking for the basic type. So I'm just typing in a search here. So type in BAS with all the titles selected and you'll get this basic title option and we can drop that onto here, stretch it out. And now we can modify our type. So I'll keep the type selected. I'm gonna to come to the type and we'll type in the name of the location. And I'm gonna change the style of this type. So I'm gonna use one of the pre-built styles here. We're gonna go for heavy and then we can click on the type and just pull it up to the top there, align it to the center. Um, so it's aligned centrally there. And then in order to duplicate this so that we can have type at the bottom as well, I'm just gonna hold down the Alt key on the timeline, drag this up, and then I can pull that new text down. And as I'm dragging it down, I'm holding down the Shift key as well. And we can then type in a second piece of text. So we have text above and below um, our video. Um, on a different color background. If we select the color background again, we can go ahead and change it. So we can use the sliders here. We can pick a color from the color picker, or as we did before, we can click on the box. So we've got many different ways of doing the same thing in Final Cut Pro. So you can see we can modify the colors that we have here until we're happy with, with what we're getting. So essentially that's how to create a square video. And once you've got that set up, and then we can export that out. So the format I like to export these videos out in is in the MPEG-4 format. And there's a specific setting you need to change in the export options in order to do that. So if we come to, and in fact, just before I do this, I'm gonna shorten this video up because there's a little bit of a zoom at a certain point in here. And I wanna keep it just as the wide shot. So after this last wave breaks, before we move, I'm just gonna trim this down a little. So we've got a slightly shorter video here. I'm snapping all those endpoints to that same point. So we've got a 21 second video that will play through. And we could go ahead and add some stabilization to this. My camera work is good, but not perfect. So it shouldn't take too long to, to kind of analyze that and stabilize it. So we've got a little bit of smoothing in the stabilization now. So now if we, once our video is ready, we'll come up to the top to the export button and we'll go to master file. And then in here, I've already got it set, but we'll go to settings and you want to select from the format options, the computer option, okay? Which is going to save this as uh, an MPEG-4, okay? So it's basically going to be an MP4 movie. The file extension will be MP4 we'll choose H.264 better quality. The resolution is gonna be the same, so 1080 by 1080, and we'll go to next. And I'm just gonna drop this straight onto my desktop. And so now, if we click up on the background tasks here on the top left, we can see it exporting, and it's a relatively short video with very few effects, so it should export pretty quickly. exported we'll close this up if we jump to the web browser we'll jump into Facebook and click on the write something option here so we're on my uh, business page here but it will be pretty much the same for any page that you're uploading to so I'm gonna grab a video file here by clicking on the little camera jump to the desktop grab the video I exported open that up 
and I get the option here to choose a custom thumbnail so we can pick the still from this little sequence of video and I'll just write a little caption about this and once we've written a caption and everything's uploaded we can hit publish so the video is ready if we scroll down then it begins to play we've got 1080 by 1080 video, uh, no sound on this video, and essentially um, the video will play automatically when it comes into the stream. So I'm just going to copy this and we'll go to Twitter as well and write a new tweet. Grab the video. And again, the video is uploaded. It's, and at first it plays back at a little bit of a low qu lower quality on Twitter, but once it's recompressed it, then you'll see the video come up in this nice quality. And you can see even at full screen, um, it's looking pretty nice and sweet. So we've got 1080 by 1080 video there, um, square video playing back um, in Twitter and also in Facebook. And those looking, uh, both looking pretty nice once you've waited a few minutes for them to, to recompress into that higher quality. So that's the end of the demo here. Um, hopefully that's useful. Um, a few tips there for scaling and working with video when you're creating this square video format and then also for uploading it to Facebook and Twitter. Um, if you have any questions about Final Cut Pro 10 then leave a comment below and I'll see you on the next tutorial.